So my name is Tony DiVittorio, and I'm the president and CEO of Clearbrook. Our business, we're in human services. We provide services and supports for people with intellectual and developmental disabilities uh, through the wide range of life, from infancy until geriatric age and everything in between. As a nonprofit working in the state of Illinois, especially uh, the state's fiscal situation is, is, is brutal. And so um, the challenge for Clearbrook and for myself is to make sure that we continue to operate with great quality, that our mission and our focus is so important that uh, we don't lower our standards because the state's lowering their, their standards. And uh, that just means we have to be more entrepreneurial, more businesslike, more effective, more efficient, and get very creative in alternative uh, funding so that uh, we don't use the state's crisis as an excuse to do less than what we should. So in our field, so we're a not-for-profit. And a lot of people see that as a style of doing business. And there's kind of a victim's mentality, little sisters of the poor, help us. Uh, nonprofit for Clearbrook means that's our tax status. But I think that we um, really see ourselves as a business. And uh, if we have no margin, we have no mission. And so we don't feel ashamed of the fact that we try to operate uh, in our mission uh, as a business so that we look for those things that will have great return so that develop our resources. We also have loss leaders which ethically we're not going to let go of. They lose money, those services, but they're needed and they're part of our mission, part of our, our culture. Uh, but we try to balance that with other opportunities where we can kind of maximize our income and maximize our return and not feel guilty about making money because if we make money over here, then we can pay for those things that we're not making money over there. Um, so it's, it's that sense that even though this is a social service, even though it's a non-for-profit, it's a business. And uh, like any business, we want to be the leader in the business, uh, the one who sets the standards, the one that people are familiar with, uh, the, the one that our customers, those families that have children with disabilities, come to because of our reputation. So our uh, greatest challenge by far in our industry, and, and I think it's, it's in the for-profit world right now with the economy the way it is, is finding staff, any staff really. Uh, but when you're underfunded and the incentive of just good pay is secondary to the type of work, now it really gets challenging. Um, so our hands-on staff are doing the work of, you know, they're, they're distributing meds, they're implementing behavior plans, they're cleaning the homes, they're prepping the meals, they're driving people to work, uh, and yet they might be getting paid the same as someone working in retail. And in retail, you can show up, do your job, and go home. Here, you can't. You really need the training, you need the commitment. And then, if we're competing for those dollar workers, uh, our dollars aren't as great. And uh, so we have to attract quality people in a different way. And so we go to their, their values and their heart. Um, like myself. I want to be doing what I'm doing because I'm making a difference in people's lives and that makes a difference in my life. I can't pay people enough to do our work the right way, but I can give them the opportunity and the training where they're making a difference and they know that. But then I have a responsibility to pay them as much as I possibly can, to create a culture that supports them, to discover the benefits that we can afford that are important to them. Uh, you know, healthcare, the standard ones and time to be with family but also maybe continuing education and training, uh, getting people credentialed so that they grow as professionals. So our organization uh, is a professional organization and we have degreed and non-degreed professionals. So some of our most valuable staff are people, maybe they never finished uh, college, maybe they never went to college, but they know they're valuable. That's how we attract people. Uh, it's the work that we do that attracts them. It's how that we do that work that keeps them. Uh, and it's letting them know that they're appreciated. There's nuts and bolts things we do to try to separate ourselves from the pack. Um, we have referral bonuses, like a lot of companies, but in the nonprofit world, not so much. But those are $1,000 bonuses, which in the nonprofit world are significant. But if I'm paying overtime for open shifts, it's not that significant. Um, we have people meet their supervisor the first day for lunch. So they're in training, they get pulled out of training, and they go to a restaurant and have lunch on us. And the only rule is you don't talk about work. I want them to know each other as people. I wanna know, you know, do you have a family, do you have kids, you know, do you have a spouse? What's, you know, are you struggling with something at home? Or I want you to grow and trust me. 
because if I know what's going on in your life, I'll, I'll treat you differently than if I didn't know what's going on in your life. And I, pe I think people appreciate that. So as they're starting on, that's a good way to start. You know, you don't meet your boss two weeks into the job. You meet him on the first day for lunch.